Okay, so a quick video here today on this FPV DVR from Nadissi. This is a standalone uh, DVR for recording your analog FPV uh, video. And uh, essentially, this is, as far as I can tell, the same electronics and firmware as on the Eshin Pro DVR, which I reviewed a long time ago. Um, the menus and everything work the same. The difference here between the old uh, Pro DVR and this one here is this is standalone because it has a built-in battery. So it has an on-off switch here. It has a built-in 1S uh, 400 milliamp hour LiPo inside. You charge it via a micro USB cable here. Uh, you can just use any other, any 5 volt source to charge the battery inside and it just powers up by itself without any external power. And it's using these 3.5 millimeter, um, I guess these barrel plugs here, these basically audio jacks on the AV in and AV out for the video signal. You include two of these cables here and they have four wires here. The black is ground, the red is video, and the white and the green is right and left audio. Now the order of the pinout here on the plug is not compatible with your Fat Shark goggles. So here is the order of the plug there. So it's video, ground, um, right audio, left audio, and I don't know what the order is on the Fat Sharks, but it doesn't. It didn't work on the Fat Sharks. It did work on the uh, this Yishin 800D uh, goggles, and I'll plug that in here, show you here in a second. But it shows you here how you can get video in for record mode for audio AV in, and then also AV out to your goggles. I'll demonstrate that as well. Um, the thing that you know, I think I would have preferred maybe some plugs, uh, like JST plugs instead of these barrel um, barrel jacks instead. Suppose you could open this up and modify the connections because essentially all this that's coming out of here are these, you know, all you need is these, these connections here for audio and video and ground. But um, I did have uh, this connected up in a couple different ways for, uh, for AVN coming in. I have this cable here and I have it soldered to one of these other external cables. I actually cut off the uh, video jack here on the side and soldered on the cable that was included with the DVR. And this is just has uh, power here and this plugs into a camera. So we get a, a video source here in this way. So I'll go ahead and I'll plug this in. Power up the camera. So then we should have some video coming in to the camera. The DVR is already plugged in. And then we'll go ahead and turn on our LCD monitor here. And we should have video on our 800D. There we go. And there's no card in here currently. Let's go, let me go get a card. Okay, so it's going to put in a micro SD card in here. It does take cards up to 32 gigabytes, and uh, the card error should go away. Okay, so let me show you the uh, menu system here. Um, basically, there's three buttons, a left menu and right. You're going to long press the menu button to get into the first menu. You see it's basically the same as the Yushin Pro DVR. Uh, right and left you go up and down and then short press the menu button to select. So I just already changed some of these settings. 20 minutes for the recording time. And I changed the recording size to HD, which is 720p video. Now uh, you can also go back to VGA, which is 640 by 480, and D1, um, I think that's uh, 832 by 554, something like that. I don't usually use that one, I use usually VGA or HD. Uh, when you use HD 720p, the uh, recording comes out at 1280 by 720. So it's good for 16 by 9 cameras and also um, records at about 16 megabits bit rate, which is pretty good. So you get some pretty solid recordings. And then VGA is 640 by 480, uh, around between 6 and uh, I think 6 and 7 megabits, 6 to 8 megabits, something like that. Pretty similar to a Fat Shark um, DVR. To get into the second menu, you long press the menu button again. And you get the setup where you can format the micro SD card, change your language, system reset, etc. Also, you can change your TV up. I currently have an NTSC. You can change that to PAL if you want. And then long press the menu button again to get out of the menu. And then here, um, basically to start your recording, you're going to press the left button, short press that, and then the recording icon will start. 
can see the dark red letters and then the timer is going up and you can see here we have our camera upside down so there we can see the camera is recording and you get a pretty decent recording if you want to do direct recordings like this for like camera testing uh, the other way that I have this, um, you can set this up, is instead of uh, connecting the AVN to a camera directly like I do here, you can connect it to a receiver, and I have another uh, one that I uh, connected up to a receiver in a similar fashion and was able to record some FPV footage uh, over the air using that receiver, and I'll show you some footage of that as well. And if you want to get into the playback mode, you long press the right arrow button, so we'll go into playback mode. And here we can see the recording we just made, and at the end, you just press the menu button, and I'll start playing. And this also works just like a fat track DVR. You can, uh, it's currently going at 1x rate. Press the right button, it goes to 2x rate, 4x rate. And then if you go to the left button, it goes backwards at 1x rate, and or 2x rate. So you can go forward, backwards that way. And then if you want to exit out of that, hit the menu button. And if you long press the menu button, it goes into your menu here where you can delete the recordings or go to the next one. To exit out of the playback mode, you long press the right arrow. And it goes back into the live view, basically. You can see, you can see the camera and it, the video is coming in. And that's pretty much it for the uh, this DVR. It pretty much functions the same way. You can, you can look at my old video from, I think it was like a year and a half ago. On the Ishin Pro DVR, you'll see that it functions the same way, it's just this one has a built in battery and uses these audio jacks instead of the uh, GST connectors. So, uh, you could possibly put this into a drone. It's pretty light, um, doesn't weigh too much. It does have a metal case, but I think it'd be more useful for um, doing sort of camera comparisons and getting uh, clean video without any uh, transmission breakups um, from like an FPV feed. But, you know, obviously, with the uh, different ways of getting video. There's lots of different ways you could connect it up and get video from your analog cameras. Um, that's going to do it for this uh, video. I'll show you some more, a little bit of footage from this. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.